Hey everybody, I am Damian Holbrook from TV Guide Magazine and welcome to the In Creative Company conversation with two of the powerhouses behind Girls 5 Eva. We have Meredith Scardino, the showrunner, creator, and writer, and then Mr. Jeff Richmond, the composer and executive producer. You guys, congratulations. I am so excited to talk to you, a obviously super fan, but also so proud of this show because the day it dropped on Peacock, that night, people were already tweeting out lyrics to the sh songs in the show. <laughs> like, Guy Branham immediately was like, saying how uh, New York Lonely Boy needed to win its own Emmy. And like, people were just firing off lyrics from the songs. And it was so awesome to see that within six or seven hours, people had already connected with it. How was it when you guys dropped this baby out there? It was so exciting. I mean, also, it's, it's interesting to drop it all, like just, dump everything out at once and then um and then have people cons I mean because you can watch the whole thing within about four four and a half hours yeah. so it, it was really cool to see people like immediately uh, you probably using their peacock free trial and be like let me get it done before before that expires <laughs> I don't need to pay for another streaming service but um and so yeah, that response is, has been so cool. And just to see the music resonate with people has been really rewarding. Yeah, I yeah. remember that day that it was it was coming out and, or maybe a few days before that when like critics were like, people like you, Damien, were getting a hold yeah. of it. And there were little buzzwords coming out and they were liking the show, which was great because we'd been, we'd worked on it for a long time. And then uh, it's like she said, we had just all gets dumped at once. And, uh, and people, like little words coming through, like people are liking this. Oh, they're liking this song. Oh, people like this song. They like the music. Uh, it was uh, it was very exciting. That, yeah. that whole week leading up to the real drop that day. And talking about working on this for so long. So the show, for those of you who have not caught up, is about a, a 90s girl group that reunites 20 years after they have had their moment in the sun um, because a rapper has sampled their basically their most popular song and oh, they realize that this is a chance for them to kind of try it again. Um, when Meredith, where did the idea come up? You know, like this is, I know we've spoken um, before about the idea yeah. of women in their forties, but the pop band idea. Well, the, the, yeah. So I was trying to figure out like what show I wanted to, I really wanted to write a comedy, figure out what, what, what that was going to be. And, um, I happened to notice, um, because I still, I'm still perpetually like a news hand. Actually, one time I was quoted in an interview saying I was a news ham, not a news hound, which I thought was pretty funny. So I'm a news ham. And so I just happened to um, be noticing that like all the, uh, a bunch, a spate of, um, of reunion tours that were happening uh, when I was trying to work on an idea, trying to figure out what, what, uh, where to place the show. And I noticed the Spice Girls were getting back together without Posh. Um, she was too busy. I don't know what she's doing. Just, uh, you know, being with David Beckham, but, and um, having a huge uh, fashion line. And, uh, and uh, as well as, and then I started noticing the Backstreet Boys and it just felt like there was this, it felt like enough time that people were still, um, you know, people were reuniting and getting back together. And it just felt like, oh, this is so interesting that you could kind of talk about life now being in your, a woman in your forties, blah, 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 plus, kind of look back at a time when, you know, I came of age, you know, around the turn of the century. And so to be able to kind of look back at that and, and reconcile with things you did then and things you're not proud of or things you didn't know were messed up and then realize like, how am I gonna change and be an adult now? And and all set against the kind of hyperbolic world of the, of the pop, of, of pop music just felt like a really, lightning in a bottle kind of feeling um, to explore uh, for a premise of a show. So you go and you, you're you working with Little Stranger, yes. uh, Jeff and, 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 and Miss Tina Fey and that whole crew that you've been working Robert. with for years on other shows. Um, and Jeff, for you, you know, you've always contributed the music to the shows, you know, and in a given season, you might get a musical episode or, you know, a great musical number that like for 30 Rock or, you know, a, a, an animated musical number or a musical sequence in, in Kimmy Schmidt. But this one was, 
clearly a big ask. Right. I, uh, I, I know where you're going with this. What was I doing <laughs> at the time in the office when there was only one song to do? Or are you getting paid a lot more <laughs> right, for the right. more work you do? I think that's where it's going. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's very true. So when this went, you know, and it, like you said, that we hang around the little stranger office and there's a lot of, everybody's busy. Meredith is there every day. She's either working on this, after this show or this, and we're all there. And then one day Meredith comes in and says, I have this idea and it's a girl group and it's this, and it sounds like, and my, you know, my, oh my, so is it like the monkeys? Or is there going to be a full song at the end of every episode? Yeah, I said the monkeys. That's how old I am. Anyway. I was just really excited from the beginning. And Meredith and I had worked on a couple of songs before. So I was uh, intrigued anyway, because I find that she's really funny. She's really smart and she's really funny at lyrics. Uh, Meredith, do you remember like we did, a, we had a Kimmy, I think your first episode that you wrote maybe was a musical episode? Um, I don't think it was the but first one, but it was. But wasn't it uh, Columbia House? Yeah, the Columbia House episode was, I forget what season it was, maybe season two or three. Um, but yes, yeah, so we wrote a lot of fake, songs that would have been on Wait, this now so were, were you yeah. behind the um the lemonading uh that was not my episode but okay. i you know we all write on everything so right. i was certainly excited I'm, and pitching on it yeah and then also in that same i think we had to do an r kelly knockoff so we are yeah, right. I, I'm convinced I can swim was the r right. kelly knockoff yeah. we, we wanted to actually get the song i think and we in Mr. Kelly would not allow it. So we had to really kind of back into writing a song, which is not unlike what we're doing right now. With the season. Well, this was right. This was the off brand pop song. Yes. Like this one. Right. Yeah. It was, so, it was now that now, now that's what sounds like music or something right, like something that. Like, it was their rip off of now that, you know, that's yeah, what right, I call music. Right. So, so how, how versed were, well, Meredith, I'm assuming you were probably more well versed in the pop girl, like the pop, movement of the 90s than maybe jeff was oh don't underestimate jeff's love of well he just 90s. cited the monkeys <laughs> my dad was in a monkeys cover band i will say that that's nice. interesting there you go fun so fact damien no but well, you're jeff right. by the i will say jeff is like he can he's he's like a, um if you were if you were trying to knock off uh you know, sell paintings illegally. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's like going to Jeff, like he yes. can imitate any, he could do Van Gogh, M Manet, you know. Right. Uh, he's basically a forgery uh, savant. Yes. He's a forgery yeah. savant. So yeah. I, I felt very uh, comfortable with <laughs> this in his hands. So you guys did all the real, but she's a real, she's a real star that she knew what kind of song she wanted in, in there as well. And I think that the, the, the only thing that I'll say about about, you know, about, you know, where I was musically in the 90s was that uh, one of the things I was doing is writing music for a second city and then eventually writing for Saturday Night Live, which means that you are just, you are just aping so many different kinds of styles. And so you're having to listen to things right away because people are demanding that, oh, this sound, this needs to sound like Destiny's Child and I need it, to, need it tomorrow. So you kind of had to, you kind of had to have all your, uh, uh, you had to be ready to do whatever on, at any time. And, well, at, at SNL, you also got to see a parade of these acts come in every week. Uh, absolutely. It's, uh, every week you get to do that, which is an exciting part of that job because you're right on the uh, the uh, cusp of actually what's going on uh, musically at that particular uh, moment in time. And so every Thursday, the, whoever they'd be coming in, Brittany, coming in for a sound check and then being able to go on the floor and listen to them or whoever they were, you know, uh, Beyonce, all, all of it, super cool and exciting. And to be in, in the room, you got to really feel what that was like and really listen to that music. So what was your writing process? Because again, you've created a great comedy that's filled with tons of jokes and then you add music on top of it. And aside from just the recording aspect, like how much more work did writing music for a comedy add to your, like, you know, how, like people say, oh, when you have your second baby, it's not, it's not just like 50% easier. It's still 100% more work. Right. Well, we we approached it, all the music is like snippets. So we would, we would, you know, because they live within the body of a comedy that's a scripted comedy, a sound musical. So, uh, you know, we, some of the songs would step out a little longer. Like, for example, Dream Girlfriends is about a minute and a half or something or a minute um, on, on screen within the body of the episode. So, you know, but for the most part, it would be like a quick flashback. And so you just write 
a little verse or just the chorus or even just one line um, <clears throat> that you don't even know where it was in the song. And so in some ways that made it feel more manageable for myself at least and, and also the writers because we weren't necessarily all songwriters. Um, and then, but what the fun organic part was just that once we started doing that, Jeff, Jeff would be like, hey, we should make this a full song or whatever. And so then we just started writing them after the show wrapped and was, was really in post. Jeff and I started like working on these full, full versions of the, of the songs, which at that point it was, it was already past so much of it. So it felt much more manageable. If we had thought about doing it within, you know, while trying to get the story to all work and all, all, all that stuff, it might've been um, a little bit more overwhelming, I think. Yep, and, and I, and yeah, and I think Meredith nailed it too. It's like, uh, the, uh, Meredith, who is a, actually a very gifted lyricist, um, uh, really does a great job, but they, they do, comedy writers do tend to like, here's some funny rhyming lines that kind of scan, but this is our, the general idea that just and what the hook of the song could be. And then you kind of take that away and you bend it in shape until it feels like yeah. it's singable and musical, musicalable. Yeah, yeah, Jeff would like, he, he was, was he was really good about being like, okay, well, here's here's a something we think is funny and here's two lines of it. And you go, you know, for example, Puber Dude, the Puber Dude song um, in um, in episode seven that Andrew Rannell's old boy band sings, uh, Boys Next Door. And in the table read, uh, the only line that was scripted was, look who went through Puber Dude, it's the boys next door. And so Jeff kind of took that and was like, I feel like we need a little bit more here and there. And so we were all pitching on it. And eventually we got two verses that ended up living within the body of the show. And so that's kind of how it it grew, like hatched from that egg. And then eventually we wrote the whole song. And Jeff, how much of cat, this- Because once we have, oh, I'm sorry, Damien, go ahead. No, just, I just want to know I how much of this- like, <laughs> But I mean, it was like- once we had Andrew Rannells, I just knew that we had to give him more to, more to sing because people would demand it. There yes, there. he's incredible. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, how much of this, like after the fact, kind of, you know, like, oh, we've got all these ideas, we can flesh out these songs. How much of that, kind of like was born from the work you did on Mean Girls for Broadway, where it was like, we need a new song, we need a different song here, we're gonna swap this one out. And you basically kind of learn how to like, do this stuff on the fly. Yeah, it, you do that on the Broadway scene for sure. I, I, people have been asking that question too. And I say, you know, the thing about the difference between TV and Broadway is Broadway thinks about it so much. You have so much more to think about. <laughs> Not so much more to think about. I said that wrong. You just have so much more time to think about it. Mm. And on TV and film stuff, it is so immediate, which to me gives it uh, a really, <laughs> a really cool energy that you know I'm going to create this really quickly. It's going to have to come out fast. Can't be too precious with it. I can't. Uh, I can't uh, own it in a particular in a particular way, the way you do with Broadway stuff. Mm. And so I think it happens quick, and I think it happens in a more fun kind of way. I'm not trying to trash Broadway. Broadway is super fun. Uh, but uh, it, but the time it does it does get really fast on Broadway is uh, it, are the weeks right before you open the couple of three weeks the the month before when you're in previews and certain things aren't working and you're right then you're in there jumping in and you're tossing a song out and turning it over the next day wow. with a full cast of people wow. it is it is a nail biter it sounds harrowing um, but but I will say also like the fact that we were run and gun with the way we were making these songs kind of really did work with the way that this group was churned through right. a pop machine. So it, it always felt like whatever they did in the past was underbaked. So we were happy to be like al dente. You know, it, was, it does, there is a very, very much feels like a lot of their stuff was the first draft. First, first thought, thought, production. Yeah, first yeah. thought. <laughs> This is, a, this is an idea, let's go. And oh, now, yeah. which one of you is responsible for rhyming gelato with Nelly Furtado? That's Jeff. That's me, yeah. Well Why? done. We... <laughs> well done. That was, I, I can expand on that song too, because like when Meredith was writing here, that little stranger, we know we're getting ready to go into production. And in the, uh, I think in the pilot episode, which is where that comes from, that song was just kind of in little fragments. And I, yeah. I went to Meredith and said, Meredith, we got to write, we got to get this one written. 
And at the meantime, I think you were re really busy just trying to keep the room going because we also had to get it written because it was also the song that had to get sampled. Like it sampled. was, we had to write that whole song so that we could do the other song. But uh, that's uh, kind of, that song got written in the beginning and kind of quickly, I think. Because that's their anthem. And then that's that was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, and it was cool that Jeff pushed to kind of make the whole thing because that was kind of a proof of concept for all the other songs that we ended up doing. Being like, okay, these are viable full songs yeah. that we can. I, I, and to jump on that too, it's it, we really did need to know, to be honest, like, oh, can we can we do this? Can we pull this off? Um, well, can we make these sound good? Will they sound right? And so it was good to do a full a full version of one right at the beginning to get our to get our. Uh, to stretch our legs into that world, into that style. It was really mm -hmm. learning there in the first few episodes, I think. Yeah. And how, how much of your cast abilities did you have to kind of like write towards or around? Well, they're all superstars. Yeah, they it's really are. It's kind of like when we first went into creating this show, it was always another source of comfort to be like, well, we'll get funny people. And if one of them can sing great and the rest can kind of clap and like damn, Cause a lot of these girl groups didn't have, you know, a murderer's row of, of singers. Right. Right. Um, so, but then when we started casting in first we got Sarah and then we went to Renee and it was like, oh my gosh, we have these, these, these great singers and Busy and Paula are both really talented singers as well. So then it just felt like okay, yeah, let's let's make as many songs as we can. And Definitely. And, them, yeah. and also, we did talk about that in the beginning and, and saying like, well, if we have Sarah and, and one more singer, we can always Partridge Family this because there's only Shirley Jones and Dave Cassidy singing. There, I got that in there. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that they could, we could, we could have sweetened all these tracks with other right. people and studio singers. Uh, we didn't have to. And it, they were all, everyone was so talented. And okay, they, I, I, that could I have been a plot line that. that there was someone else that sang right. Summer's All Summer's Party. Oh, right. I, oh. Wanted, I wanted to ask about that. Like how was there, were there backup singers? Were there other vo vocalists or you just relied on your four and then Ashley? And Erica. And Erica. Right. Um, right. In the past, yeah, in the past songs, it was Erica, Ashley, and, and you know, and Renee, Sarah, and, right. uh, um, and, and Busy. But uh, I, I can't say that we didn't do on a couple of the songs, a little sweetening because that's what you do. So I would, I would like to say there is an every now and then a little bit of a different boy, vocal, but it's only to add a little, just to fill it out a little bit more. And so that's your cast, and that's the thing is you've got Busy Phillips, you have Sarah Bareilles, you have Renee Elise Goldsberry, you have Paula Pell, who it, this show now proves that she can literally do anything, Paula she Pell. Yeah. I mean, then you have from Mean Girls Broadway, you have Erica Henningsen and Ashley Park showing up. So you do have, and then you have Andrew Reynolds. Um, right. So it was like, you did have a wealth, uh, like an embarrassment of riches to work with because they're all also incredibly funny. Um, when you started to think, um, first of all, I also need to know before we even go further, in season two, will we ever hear music from uh, Wiki's album, Yesternight? I would love to write some we yesternights. We also really want to write Will um, Will Chase's Det Robson's yes. uh, single White, White Jazz. White jazz. We want uh, I also really want to write Tiny Butts Forever, the full song of that. I have a lot of, we have a lot of, we, okay. we ran out of time. I would have yeah. loved to have written all, you know, worked on all of those. Jazz. Because I just, I, when she, when she walks past that poster in that episode, I was like, I need to hear that album. <laughs> Very um, self-serious. And then sure. you guys actually did come out with an incredible album that's available on like Apple Music. You've got the, these recordings, the full length recordings, which I, I, I texted um, Jeff and Tina after it dropped, like I was driving somewhere and had to pull over. <laughs> of, of the lyrics that were just like, I was I kept covering my mouth laughing and had to pull over because I was not steering. The lyrics to you can't afraid. listen to it. Oh, <laughs> the lyrics to "I'm Afraid" are like an escalation of just insanity, and we don't get to see some of them on screen because she has this entire verse about being afraid of throwing a baby into a ceiling fan. <laughs> these are these are real. <laughs> I got to like 
go in and write like my darkest, weirdest. I mean, they're not all, I don't have a thing about corpse sex. That right. was someone else's joke. Um, but uh, so I definitely had, you know, help from the room. But uh, that baby thing, I always have it. My sisters have it. We're like, we hold a baby. And I'm like, what if I just throw it out the window by accident? Oh God, it's so precious. And so <laughs> writing some of those, those things down was really fun. And also, to, and a little scary, because I'm like, does anyone else think this? Does anyone else and think then, this? Right. Yeah, and then, uh, and it's been really cool to see that it resonates with people. And there's a, there's a very specific astuteness to um, New York Lonely Boy. Yeah. A very observed take <laughs> on a very specific type of child um, that is based on your son, correct? Yes, my son, Oscar. Uh, he's three and a half. He'll be four in July. Um, he, you know, the story is basically like I had a baby, uh, you know, four years ago, and um, everyone go, oh, you gonna have a second one or whatever. I'm like, no, no, no. He's just gonna be a New York lonely boy. That's what I would say. And and I'm like, you know, those kids. You see them all over the city. They're they're always like at a bistro with their parents and having adult conversations. And their clothes are spotless. He'll be one of those very polite sophisticated little sons in the city. I don't know why I see it more with sons than I do with daughters. No idea. Just, this is just my anecdotal uh, take. But so writing that was really fun um, just to put in real examples like trick-or-treating at restaurants and um, right, like having like liking savory ice cream. <laughs> yeah. you know, like that is just so odd and so like perfect and like having his favorite fun. right like, like oh these are the kids that grow up to be hipsters yeah you know yeah. new york yeah so when what the was doorman your, thing yeah what did you how did you break your work day into like did you break it to from script to music um like we're gonna specifically work at like from two to six on songs no we would kind of we would break the episode and then if there was a song you know somebody always goes off and does a writer's draft and then you always tear it apart like dogs and, you know, mine included. But um, it, it, when it got to a point, like, for example, in episode three, there was a kind of a flashback to their old music um, that they feel like are messages that they don't uh, align with today. And those were like fun jokes just to pitch on and do at the room. And Michael Coleman, I think, had a few of those. Uh, so that was part of his, the storyline and he was working on that episode. But um, some of the longer songs like dream girlfriends we had a google doc where people were throwing in jokes in there about like i came up with the idea for dream girlfriends and that because our dads are dead and then we kind of ran with that um and then sometimes what i would do is because we would try to you know write in a room together the writers and i uh virtual room but you know like rhyming things it's, it's like kind of hard to do with a group of four, five people. So a lot of times I would gather some ideas um, and then just kind of go off by myself and try to try to beat it out and put it into a structure and then send it to Jeff. And then Jeff would say, hey, you know, Mayor, we could use another verse here or a bridge or, or something like that. And then it, it was very collaborative. Um, and and then the full size songs after the fact, because no, I am I no longer employed anyone. Except it was just me, Jeff, and 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 Tina taking our phone call. But like, uh, you know, then it was just me kind of doing the splingy alone at two in the morning in my bedroom, and then uh, and then sending it to Jeff and him being like, okay, we need this here. Or whatever. That was another one where I know exactly where I was the first time I heard the splingy. Because the line, <laughs> and I have it written down because it's so messed up. Um, the only thing left is to repeat it two more times to make one complete swingy. <laughs> the entire song is directions on how to do it. And then you have to do it three times forward. That is one of the, well, the, I feel like I come from a line of, of, of comedy writers that sort of likes to torture people a little bit, like the audience. In, in the Kimmy Schmidt Interactive, we had a similar thing with Taco Snake, if you recall, where it was singing the 12 Days of Hismas and you had to sit through it and you got rewarded if you did or whatever. But so there is something fun about giving someone impossible directions and then telling them it's still not over. <laughs> so do it two more times. Jeff, do you have a favorite style of music to actually write? Oh, God. 
I don't know. Um, uh, I, 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 that's a great question. Why didn't I ever, why didn't I prepare that? Yeah, I guess to just to write, uh, mm -hmm. if I'm just trying to do something fun, it's either um, old timey, old timey 1930s, uh, old <laughs> Porter kind of. Mm -hmm. Like daddy's thing. boy? Like daddy's boy, yeah. Daddy's boy yeah. Jimmy Smith. I, I really, I, my brain kind of lives around that. And it also kind of lives around 19, uh, 1975 rock. So if I could just <laughs> those I two, and, and, and if somebody would want to pay to hear those kind of music songs, I could be, I could be somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for both of you, what's your favorite Girls 5 Eva song? Girls 5 Eva song or song yeah. from Girls 5 Eva? Oh, song from Girls 5 Eva. Um, well, I will say, like, I, I'm, you know, bow down to Sarah Bareilles for writing us four stars. And yeah. it's it's really ins inspirational and captures everything we wanted to show the growth and the determination and, you know, joy of these women. And so it's incredible. Uh, uh, but personally, like, my, the, the ones that are super personal to me are, are New York Lonely Boy and somehow the Splingy. <laughs> but Dream Girlfriends is close too. It's very close. Yeah, uh, new, for me, it's still like I, uh, uh, New York Lonely Boy, I love Sarah, I love all the songs. I love everything we wrote and everything, but there's something about the, um, the ease of that song and how funny it is and that mm -hmm. style that uh, is joyful and melancholy and funny all at the same time. I really I enjoy that a lot. Of course, I've in uh, Famous Five Evas. Famous Five Evas. Yeah. When the video dropped this weekend, I, I was, uh, I was uh, watching and listening to that song again going like, oh yeah, that's, that's it's a great song. It's a really fun it's song. A, it's a bop. Um, a bop. It's a bop. And uh, Jeff, I did want to ask you uh, your theme songs. Yes. Is it something that you, do you, are you aware that all of your theme songs end with like a, like a little button? I do, I am. Okay, all right. Cause we had yeah. like 30 Rock had like the doo kind of thing. That's but then we had that's that's 30 Rock. Wait, how did 30 Rock end? What did it sound like exactly? It the ended noise? with dump, 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 30 Rock basically is what was right. happening. Uh, and, then, uh -huh. and then of course, uh, Kimmy Schmidt ended with a uh, damn it. Damn it. Uh -huh. And, and uh, then great all, news and this and Mr. Yeah. Mayor all have like tones. Yes, and, and I, I remember I went to Meredith and I said I said Meredith we I want to put a bell tone on on your created by card because it doesn't feel quite complete. Right. It doesn't feel like we're ready to move into the episode until somebody Thanks. rings the bell and you have to <laughs> it's like dinner bell. bell. Yeah, it is ding. Act one. There you go. I like yes. it. And then you mentioned um, four stars. It took me a couple listens to realize it's so perfect because it starts with girls five Eva, but then you end with your four stars. And then all these women, I like. I was like, I know it was clearly what your plan was. But I didn't <laughs> what? Know. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's about them too, uh, which I think is lovely. And the crazy thing is like, even on uh, I'm Afraid, which is lyric, it just cannot be performed a lot, like in public um, with mixed company, but Sarah Bareilles sounds amazing on it. Mm -hmm. Like she, her uh, I remember, I remember the night before the table read, we read two at a time and we read, we were reading three and four at the same time. And the night before, so we had the scripts had gone out and, blah, blah, blah. and the night before I got two snippets of audio and I was like, my jaw was like cartoon on the ground. And that was New York, Jeff's, Jeff's take on New York Lonely Boy mm -hmm. and Sarah singing I'm Afraid. And I, I like couldn't believe that these talented people were associated with the amount of dumbness that I was bringing, <laughs> that and our writers were bringing to the table. And I was just like, oh my God, this is incredible. Cause her voice is oh. like, velvet it's, chocolate yeah it's, it's so the, beautiful angel that she makes everything uh, she makes everything just sound so much better so i mean we could have been delivering you know uh some real garbage to that lady and we didn't but if we had god it would still be it would still sound great it would be gr great, great sounding garbage great if you garbage. don't listen 
to the what she's saying it right. sounds like a her vocal, beautiful yeah. song and the, the milk carton kids are her friends they are yeah so people. we went yeah they she, yeah, we they were had, looking oh go ahead john i was going to say that uh, we were looking at the last minute because we were getting ready to actually start uh, uh, mixing an episode with the new york london boys and at that point my voice was still on it or maybe it was jack my assistant's voice was still on it and we knew we had to get someone to sing it and we'd always plan to find somebody. And uh, we reached out to Sarah. Sarah said, new, uh, Milk Carton Kids, I remember them. I went to listen and said, well, that's perfect. They are, they are, they are Simon and Garfunkel of now. And uh, yeah, that was uh, mm -hmm. such a fun collaborative thing to put together. Yeah. All right, well, I have to wrap you guys, but before I go, have you started working on songs for season two? Or is there like a crazy stockpile of songs that we didn't get like <laughs> Prince's Vault? Well, like we we have our list of things because we we really, it was really ambitious for us to try to create a full album in the time that we had, yeah. um, given that we were kind of also cramming uh, vocal sessions on top of these ADR sessions. So we, like I said, we, we have yesterday tiny but spread like we, we, i have like at least 10 songs that i would happily um jeff and i would happily like dive into but um yeah hopefully we'll get to Look do them. forward yeah, yeah it would be great yeah it would be weird if you didn't after the reviews so weird. and that's weird. the cool thing is like you guys got great reviews for the show and the music yeah you can't beat that no no it was now you just have to talk awesome <laughs> yeah, now I'm like, I'm like imagining if we screw it up in the future, it's like, well, it really was a one eight wonder, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> well, well, I doubt it. Themselves. Season two. Yeah, them. I'll send them all. I already sent them to the post. Don't right. worry. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, you guys, thank you guys so much. Thank you in creative company. This was fantastic. Um, I wish you guys both the best. Can't wait to talk to you again uh, about new music, new season, award season, whatever. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, you guys. And don't forget Girls 5 Eva on Peacock. <laughs>